Welcome back to an introduction to IoT security. Now that we've laid the groundwork with an understanding of the different types of IoT systems that are out there and what makes up an IoT system, we can start to think a little bit about how you might secure an IoT system. We'll be talking specifically about threats, vulnerabilities, and risks. The current state of IoT security, and we'll look at botnets in the IoT and today's IoT attack vectors, as well as regulations in the IoT to include security regulations and privacy regulations. Now that we've gone through an introduction to IoT systems and technologies, let's begin our focused discussion on security in the IoT. We're going to start here with a primer on threats, vulnerabilities, and risks. Let's first start with a review of the fundamentals of information assurance. When we talk about confidentiality, we're talking about keeping data secure from eavesdropping. There are many tools that we can use to enable confidentiality of our data, but one of the primary tools is cryptography. We can say that we encrypt plain text data to create what is known as ciphertext, or data that is unintelligible to anyone that doesn't hold the specific key used to decrypt that data. Note that even though we employ confidentiality protections, that doesn't mean that our data or our systems are secure. Integrity protections are another critical aspect of information assurance. With integrity protections in place, we can be assured that the data within a system has not been modified or tampered with. We typically use another cryptographic tool known as a hash algorithm to enable integrity protections. With hash algorithms, we input data into the algorithm, such as a SHA algorithm, and what is output is a short string of data. Any modifications to the input data would cause the output hash to change completely. Authentication protections validate that who is sending or receiving the data is who he or she says they are. You can enable authentication protections in a number of manners. One of those methods is through using a digital signature. If we extend our integrity discussion, we can say that the output hash is then encrypted using the private key of the sender. This is known as a digital signature, and for verification, the receiver then decrypts the hash string using the public key of the sender and then recalculates the hash to validate integrity. Non-repudiation is another security service. Non-repudiation requires both technical and procedural controls and can result in an entity not being able to later deny an action that that entity performed. Finally, it's important to talk about availability, and in this section, we'll be talking about things like denial of service attacks. Even if your data is secured, if the system can be taken offline, then there is often a significant impact. Controls must be put in place to ensure that any particular system continues to provide the services it was designed to provide. Now, let's talk about the act of compromising a system. The ability to compromise a system requires the identification of a vulnerability in that system or in the surrounding environment. Some threat actor imagines or identifies a threat to a system. The threat is based on a vulnerability that can be exploited. Given an identified vulnerability, the threat actor will plan and execute an attack against the system. If successful, this will result in the compromise of that system. Events do not stop here, however. Oftentimes, once an attacker gains access to a system, they can pivot to lateral or higher value systems within an enterprise. Let's talk more about threats. Threats represent the exploit potential of a scenario, and each threat has a threat actor. The threat actor could be a human, and if that is the case, this could be a bad guy outsider, or it could even be an insider, with intimate knowledge of the system being targeted. There are many threats to any particular system, and IoT devices and systems are no exception. There are threats such as malicious insider that corrupts the supply chain with compromised hardware, or a bad guy that purchases and reverse engineers an IoT product to identify a firmware flaw. As IoT engineers design their solutions, it's important to perform comprehensive threat modeling to identify and determine mitigations for the unique threats faced by those solutions. Vulnerabilities. These are the weaknesses that the bad guys can take advantage of to compromise a system. Vulnerabilities are ever-present. There can be vulnerabilities in the design, the software, even the hardware, and even the development process itself. That is why the job of security engineers, those who defend systems, is so complex and difficult. They have to lock down everything, while the bad guys simply have to find one opening to gain access. Even worse, a vulnerability may not even be in the actual product. The vulnerability could be found in a system that the product interacts with. 
The process of identifying risks and their associated mitigations is known as risk management. Risk management is not unique to the cybersecurity profession. There are risks to program development, such as schedule risk and cost risk. There are technical risks, such as a core component of a system not being mature enough. Within cybersecurity, risks can be identified based on the results of threat modeling exercises. Risks are evaluated based on the likelihood of them occurring and the impact of their occurrence. By identifying the most critical risks, those with a high likelihood of occurring and a high impact, system designers can identify where the most resources need to be spent on mitigations. Understanding the likelihood of a risk must take into account the security posture of the system as well as the anticipated skills and motivations of potential attackers. A final thought is that the risks to an IoT system and definitely a cyber physical system tend to increase over time. This is because these systems are often long-lived. New vulnerabilities emerge with age. As an example, think of an airplane that may be in service for 20 or 30 years. This is a long time for attackers to hone their skills and tools.